With all of the recent focus on the new operating system, it's been a while since I made a video that simply discusses some of the amazing things that your iPhone can do. So in this video, I'm going to show you 12 amazing things that you can do on your iPhone right now. Please note that I'm currently running iOS 17.1.1 for this video, so make sure that you're using the most up-to-date version of iOS before trying any of these features. Okay, let's get into it. This is one of those tips that somebody told me, and I definitely didn't believe that it was something that you could actually do until I tried it for myself. You can search your photo library for sounds within videos. Open the Photos app and tap on the search button in the lower right of the screen. In the search box, type in the sound that you'd like to search for. I'm assuming that this will differ based on everyone's different photo libraries, but for mine, I was able to get this to work with the following sounds, laughing, clapping, and cheering. For all of these examples, you can see that my iPhone has located videos that contain those sounds. Here's where it gets really clever. If I play a video from the selection and then go to the scrub option at the bottom of the video, you can see a blue line. This blue line indicates exactly where in the video that the sound is playing. If there are multiple instances of the sound, there will be multiple blue lines here. It's a pretty amazing feature and I'd be really interested to know if you managed to get this to work with other sounds, so drop me a comment and let me know how you get on with this one. Your iPhone's voice assistant has a pretty in-depth knowledge of what different animals sound like and it's happy to tell you if you ask it. Just activate your iPhone's voice assistant and ask the question. For example, what does a panda sound like? Here's a giant panda. What does a cobra sound like? Here's a cobra. Here's one for the Harry Potter fans out there. If you access your iPhone's voice assistant and say Lumos, you'll see that your phone's torch or flashlight, whatever you call it, will switch on. Likewise, if you do the same thing, but say Knox, your iPhone's torch, flashlight will switch off. By the way, if you prefer to have content like this in a written format, there's a PDF version of this video complete with screenshots and you can access it along with all other PDFs I've created plus future ones for just $5 a month. You can either scan the QR code that you can see on screen or follow the link in the description of this video to learn more. Your iPhone has the ability to mimic your voice. The feature is called personal voice and it's designed to allow people who are losing their voice or who are at risk of losing their voice to capture enough information to have their phone create a lifelike interpretation of their voice. This interpretation can then be used in phone calls, FaceTime and similar apps. If you go to settings, then accessibility and scroll down to the speech section, you can see an option called create a personal voice. Tap on this, confirm your identity using face or touch ID, and then follow the steps to create your personal voice. This involves speaking 150 phrases into your phone. Your phone then uses those phrases along with machine learning to create a representation of your voice. It takes about 15 to 20 minutes to complete all of the phrases, and then it will take some time afterwards for your device to process the voice. But once it's done, it will show in the personal voice section, as you can see with mine here. Then at any time, you can triple tap the side button to bring up personal voice. You can store any phrases that you're likely to use on a regular basis in the phrases section, or you can use the keyboard to type out any phrase that you would like your phone to speak for you. There's already first party support for this feature in apps like FaceTime, and I assume that third party support for other apps will be coming in time. Hi, it's Tom from Proper Honest Tech. So if you fall into the demographic of people who might find this useful, you should definitely check it out. If you go to settings, then accessibility, there is an option in here called sound recognition. When enabled, your iPhone can listen for specific sounds and notify you if it detects them. While this feature isn't intended to replace your ability to hear, it can be helpful if you have hearing difficulties or need assistance in certain situations. By default, the feature includes sounds like breaking glass, babies crying, dogs barking, and a doorbell ringing. These sounds have obvious reasons for being included, but if you want to customize the feature for your specific needs, you can do. For this example, I'm gonna show you how I can set this up to detect the sound that my washing machine plays when it finishes a cycle. Go to settings, then accessibility and select sound recognition. Toggle the function on and allow your phone to download any necessary files, which is about 25 megabytes in size. Next, tap on sounds, scroll down to household and select custom appliance or doorbell. 
give your custom sound a name and tap continue. On the next screen, you'll need to record the sound that you want your phone to listen for. Record the sound five times in a row. Just a side note for this specific example, because this is a washing machine, I would not recommend that you run the washing machine five times. Instead, I would recommend using another device to record the sound once and then play the sound from that device. Hold your phone close to the sound source and tap start listening. Your phone should automatically recognize when the sound has finished and you'll repeat this process four more times. Once you've completed the recording and see five green ticks, wait for a moment and your phone will notify you that your custom sound is ready to use. From now on, whenever your phone hears this specific sound, it will alert you. You could even get really clever and use this as the beginning of an automation where your phone automatically sends a text to someone else to let them know that the washing is ready to be taken out of the machine. Your iPhone can recognize people in photos and now even pets in iOS 17. Once you've identified them in the Photos app, your phone will automatically create albums with them and include them in memories. It does this using machine learning and all you have to do is begin the process by letting your iPhone know who is in a particular photo. So in this photo, for example, my iPhone has recognized that there is a person, but it doesn't know who that person is. I know this because if I tap the info button at the bottom of the screen, you'll see a small thumbnail of the person in question with a question mark symbol next to the image. Tap on this and choose name this person. Give the person a name and choose next. If the name matches a name from your contacts list, you'll be able to make the connection here. Choose done and the person has now been named and will be identified by your iPhone. Once you've done this, you have a couple of options. You can tap on the thumbnail image of the person again and then choose to either view all of the photos that contain this person or feature this person less. This is handy because something that your iPhone will do is create memories using these photos. By telling your iPhone that you would like to feature this person less, your iPhone will exclude this person from those memories. You can also tap on the album button at the bottom of the Photos app and under People, Pets and Places, you'll see all of the people that you've identified in your photos. You can tap on a person to view all of the photos of that person. And as of iOS 17, this also works for pets. As far as I'm aware, this currently only works for cats and dogs, but the process is exactly the same, meaning that our dog Mitzi now has her own album with pride of place on my iPhone. Your iPhone has a built-in translation app and it's actually really good once you know how to use it. So let's say for example that you're sitting in a hotel in Holland trying to order breakfast and your waiter only speaks Dutch and you only speak English. You could use the app to get around this. Open the Translate app and choose Conversation from the options at the bottom of the screen. As an English speaker on the left you would choose Dutch and on the right you would choose English. Then press the microphone button at the bottom of the screen, hold your phone up to your waiter allowing them to speak into your phone. Your phone will listen to what they say and translate it for you. It does this both in written form and there's also a play button that you can use to hear an audio translation of what they just said. You can then hit the microphone button again and speak your reply into your phone in English. Your phone will recognize that because you're now speaking in English, you want to translate from English into Dutch and it will do this for you automatically. You can then either show the way to the translated text on your screen or press play to play it in Dutch for them. A number of languages are supported with new languages being added on a regular basis. And while I wouldn't necessarily recommend using it to get through hours of conversation, it can definitely get you out of a bind when you need it to. Your iPhone can identify and extract subjects from photos. This can be anything prominent in an image, typically a person, animal or object that stands out. Your iPhone does this using machine learning, making it incredibly easy to do. To extract a subject from an image, simply tap and hold on the subject for a moment until you see a flash effect over it. A contextual menu will then appear, giving you options to copy the subject, copy and paste it as a sticker in another app, or share the subject. If your phone identifies multiple subjects in the image, you'll see a select all button, which allows you to select all of the subjects at once. Also, there is a similar way of doing this, and that's to remove the background from an image. To do this, open a photo in your photo app and tap on the share button in the bottom left corner. From here, choose save to files. It doesn't matter where in your files app you choose to save the image. Choose a location and press save in the upper right corner. With that done, open the files app and locate the image that you just saved. Tap and hold on the image file for a moment and in the menu that appears, open quick actions 
and choose remove background. A copy of the image will be made and in that image, the background will be removed. If you have a compatible phone and you're in one of the regions where this is available, you can use something called Visual Lookup. Visual Lookup not only identifies things in your photos, but also allows you to tap on the item in the photo to gain more information about it. The list of things that can be examined in Visual Lookup is growing all the time and different people are gonna find different uses for this. However, you can use it to identify things like plants in your garden or bugs in your home. Fun fact, my wife and I recently used the macro lens on my iPhone 15 Pro with Visual Lookup to identify that we had a nest of false widow spiders in our loft with the macro lens letting us take amazing photos of the tiny spider slings. In a suitable image, you'll see an icon at the bottom of the screen, letting you know that your phone has identified something. Simply tap on this to get more information about it. In iOS 17, Apple has added a number of other features that can be looked up using Visual Lookup. If you have photos that contain food, Visual Lookup may well be able to identify what the food is and then provide you with links to recipes. If you have photos with symbols, Visual Lookup may be able to identify the symbols and tell you what they mean. I've been able to get this to work successfully for both symbols in my car and the symbols that come in the care labels of my clothes. By the way, if you're enjoying the content here, why not consider signing up to my free newsletter, The Proper Weekly, which you can do via the link in the description of this video or by scanning the QR code on screen now. The newsletter goes out each Friday and I include some tech news from the week, a behind the scenes of what's happening here on the channel, as well as a tip for an item in the Apple ecosystem. If you use the Reminders app as a way of tracking your shopping list, there is a handy feature in iOS 17 where your phone will automatically sort the items that you add to your list by the part of the store that they're located in. This is especially useful when you get to the grocery store and you want to move around as efficiently as possible without having to double back on yourself. Your phone uses machine learning to do this, meaning that you don't have to get involved at all. To do this, open the Reminders app and create a new list by pressing the Add List button in the bottom right of your screen. Give the list a name, choose a color and an icon if you wish, but the most important thing to check here is that under list type, you change it from standard to shopping. Please note that this might be called something different in your region, so if you see an option here called groceries, for example, choose that. Once you've completed the necessary information for the list, choose done, and that's it. You can add items to this list the way that you normally would, and you'll notice that as you add an item, your phone will automatically sort it into a category. If something isn't correct, tap on the item so that you can see the info button, then tap on that. This will take you to the details page for that particular item. You can see that there is an option called section in here. Tap into that and you can choose from any of the available sections or create your own section based on the specific item. If you've ever seen those photos where water is made to look really dreamy or the headlights of cars at night stream together to make one continuous light beam, this is known as long exposure photography. In the photography world, photographers usually achieve these photographs by setting their cameras on tripods, then setting the shutter speed really slow. But your iPhone makes achieving this type of image really easy. To do this, take a live photo of the scene, which you would like to turn into a long exposure photo. As a reminder, you do this by opening your camera, choosing photo, and ensuring that the live photo option is enabled. It's the icon in the upper right of your screen with lots of circles. Make sure that this icon doesn't have a line through it. As long as that's the case, you know that you're taking a live photo. Go ahead and take your live photo while trying to hold the camera as still as you can. This isn't as important as it is with a traditional camera, but the steadier you are when taking the photo, the better result you're gonna get. Once you've taken your live photo, view the photo in the Photos app. Tap on the Live button in the upper left of the photo and change it from a live photo to a long exposure photo. And that's it, you've captured a long exposure photo. This works really well with water during the day or light at night, but there are loads of situations where you can take amazing pictures using this hack, so give it a try. If you have a compatible iPhone and a compatible Mac computer, I'll put a list on the screen now showing you which devices are compatible, you can use something called Continuity Camera. This is where you can use the camera on your iPhone to replace the webcam on your Mac. Even if you have an iPhone that's a few years old, chances are the main camera on the back of your iPhone is still significantly better than any webcam built into a Mac computer. To use continuity camera, both devices need to be physically close to each other with both Bluetooth and Wi-Fi enabled. Additionally, both devices need to be signed into the same Apple ID. 
Once you've done this, you can open an app like FaceTime or Zoom, for example, and select the camera and microphone for your iPhone. Alternatively, you can connect your iPhone to your Mac computer using a cable and choose trust when prompted to allow the iPhone to trust the computer. You'll need to physically position the iPhone in a place where it's going to be able to capture your face the way that you want it to, of course. But just like that, you're now using your iPhone's camera as your webcam. So there you go, 12 examples of how the iPhone can do amazing things. I've got a video with another 12 almost ready to go, which I'll be releasing soon, so keep an eye out for that. What do you think? Is there anything that should have been included in this list? Drop me a comment and let me know. And as ever, if you found this video useful, do please consider leaving me a like and subscribing to my channel for more content like this in the future. See you on the next video.